Where are you getting that out? It's June. Well, you know, it's the Isle of Man. Um, there is no seasons here. It's just whatever it wants to give us. Well, a little. It's your, it's your homeland. A little bright from there. Uh, <laughs> you should know better. I, do. I should. The heating's on. All will be. We have to be a bit <laughs> crazy. <laughs> oh, middle of June, though, you know. Woohoo! <laughs> Phil, hey, get back here. What are you doing? We're a team here. It's wet, very wet. Uh, we were optimistic about running this afternoon. Um, they called it early this morning that they weren't going to make an announcement until 12. And then the announcement came that they weren't going to then make another announcement until 3. Um, and then it was like quarter past 3 or half past 3, and then I think we all knew. <laughs> <laughs> That's how wet it is. It's just, it's just as wet out there as it, it is in here. <laughs> if anything, it's wetter here than anywhere else, but that's what teammates are for. But yeah, no racing today, and uh, let's hopefully get a lot of racing in tomorrow. <laughs> that bit slow mo will be incredible. Does that do slow mo? Oh, Jonathan, come here, Jonathan. It's weird how the paddock's just gone empty, isn't it? Since they call it now, it's like everyone's gone instantly, just emptied. <laughs> What has just been called? Nothing to, well, they've cancelled everything for today, which is understandable with what's gone on. I'm sure there'll be some keyboard warriors stating how we should have raced or it was dry and so and so, but um, they obviously don't understand. Yeah, frustrating. So tomorrow now is, the, I, I think, what will be the final day of TTs tomorrow with planned three races. They've dropped the Superstock race, so that was probably one of my favourite races, to be honest, with our, uh, we'll probably stand a better chance in that class. Uh, a little bit more of a level playing field. So it's frustrating they've dropped that one, but um, there's a two lap super sport race in the morning. And then uh, we have the four lap senior in the afternoon at four o'clock or something. So there's no rain forecast, I don't think tomorrow at the moment. So I think it's a little ambitious, it's gonna be wet this rain will nowhere, no way dry overnight, so it's going to be wet still in the morning. I think it's going to be pushed back. Uh, just one of those TTs, I suppose. It's frustrating because the amount of work that goes in to be here from the team and everything and the costs, you know, it's uh, annoying. So, I can't even, knowing that it's another year to wait till you can come back. Uh, yeah. I think that's the worst thing, you've got to wait a whole year to come again. I mean, we, we have the classic to come back here in August, but that's not the same, you know, this is the main, this is the one. So, but there is nothing we can do. It is, that's the way it is. So we we'll just have to come back next year and try again and see what happens then. But, uh, you know, closure on that. We've potentially got the racing tomorrow, which hopefully we can finish strong and have a good day and then, uh, a few beers to kind of uh, end end the TT on a on a high, hopefully. But we'll we'll uh, see what the weatherman brings. It's just uh, that's the way it is, isn't it? Nothing we can, nothing we can do. So everyone feels the same, deflated, frustrated. Um, but that's it. So. Another, <clears throat> another day gone.
Okay, so with another cancellation due to the weather, um, the, the TT race bikes are actually packed away in the truck now, but we've uh, set up a little area here to answer some of the questions that have come through on the YouTube comments. And there's, there's a lot to kind of work through and get through, but I've picked out a few that are um, fairly, I suppose there's a few kind of repeat questions and some that I, I find also quite interesting. So this is in no particular order. I've just screenshot a few onto my phone here to work work through and uh, enlighten you with, with the answers. So uh, Simon Newman 7413 said, James, quick question. How do you wind down enough to sleep as you must have so much on your mind? Great insight from a riders and pit crew around the buzz of the TT, all the best. So, um, to, I feel with age this has got easier, but I remember, it in, and it's probably more particularly difficult in practice week because we sometimes may get off the bike at 8.30 at night, um, pretty wired after buzzing around here. Um, and I find my, my body clock actually changes at home when I'm sort of casual and chilled. It's kind of a, I'm probably a 10 p.m. kind of guy. Um, whereas here, I won't be asleep much before midnight. And I think that kind of naturally, I don't really have a prob too much of a problem sleeping. It just, um, my body clock just changes a little bit. I sleep in later in the morning and uh, and to wind, wind down, it's, um, we just kind of, well, we always have a debrief after a session and then uh, the first few nights, maybe I'll have a beer just to kind of chill a little bit. But um, yeah, it kind of naturally just come down. But I feel with age, I kind of wind down quicker. So yeah, but it is, it is difficult when um, out there, especially on the superbike, my brain is and eyeballs are working to their absolute limit. And then to come in and kind of just, you almost just crash a little bit, but, um, and zone out, you know, it's weird because often, I mean, more often than normal, my wife would be talking to me and then I would be, be thinking about a section of the course or something and uh, wake up and uh, have to ask her to repeat herself, which I'm sure many of you guys can relate to, um, can relate to that. But uh, yeah, so that's how we wind down, Simon. So Brandon Ellis 2982 is said, James, even in bright sunshine, you seem to be wearing a clear visor. Is that a compromise so you can see that in the shade under the trees or a personal preference? And the answer, well, you're pretty much right there. It's a, it is a compromise. There's a lot of compromise here with bike setup and comfort, I suppose. Um, I would rather kind of be able to see less in the bright sections, I suppose, and see more in the dark because um, it's, it's a struggle to see under the trees in, um, it's not so much if you had time to adapt and adjust your eyes it would be okay but the the speed in which it transitions from dark to light in some sections your eyes simply can't catch up so I kind of almost stay let's say more on the squinty side um, than, than the struggling to see in the dark side if that makes sense so I I tend to always run a clear or clearer visor um, and, and everyone's different like I know quite a few nearly always run dark and particularly this year with the new surfaces uh, it's been hard to spot some of the damp se sections that have been holding out so um, I've probably run a clear visor more this year than ever just to help spot those damp sections and uh, more so even under the trees so Keith Tiernan 2752 has asked again how do you sleep in Fortnite in particular night before big races so that it's a little bit different now with winding down but sleep uh, isn't really a, a problem weirdly you know I kind of I think maybe in my early days newcomer I overthought things but um, with time and age I suppose um, switching off has become a bit easier I've managed to just uh, we'll watch some telly or film or a bit of YouTube and uh, I kind of turn off the, the, the race thoughts I suppose because it worrying and staying up at night and worrying about them isn't going to change anything uh, at all but I would say when I wake up in the morning and that that is then my first thought of the day is to what I'm gonna eat what time I've got to be up beware how when I'm gonna start drinking and what I'm gonna drink hydration um, visors everything have everything in place which I do a lot of the groundwork the day before obviously but um, 
I feel I'm quite good at switching off at night and then turn it back on again in the morning. So, uh, Ducati Mail, which is, uh, has said, you've got the bars set really wide, angled out by the looks of it. Is that a particular TT setup you run or do you keep them like, like that also for car park racing? Um, cheers for the series of vids. So yes, the reason that's a, a we generally would run them a bit narrower on short circuit. We have them wide, I say we, there's, I know another other riders have them particularly wide here, a little bit like motocross. Um, and that's simply to increase leverage. So um, the further out your bars are, the more leverage you have to steer and control the bike if it's upset or weaving or turning the bike in at high speed, changing direction. The wider the bars are, the more leverage you have to pitch the bike from side to side. So it's, um, again, it's a, it's a compromise. You lose a bit of aero being having your hands out a bit more in the wind um, and probably a lack of, uh, compromise a little bit of comfort, but having them uh, uh, out wide just gives you, enables more bike control really with less effort. So um, that's that. And also hard, long braking sections it just it's just if you imagine doing a press up it's easier to do press ups with your arms out wide than than in tight so it just makes my life easier and um, that helps with with an endurance race like here so lee mcn air 8500 has asked when you rock up at the tt with a new bike what do you concentrate on first rear grip power delivery stability under braking it must be a nightmare as it's not short circuit with a constant surface so that's a, that is a good question and um, the key factor I look for is, a, again, compromise is, is um, an overall good bike. You're never ever going to have a, a perfect bike everywhere here and the sooner you can get your head around that, the better because um, you can end up chasing something that doesn't actually exist. So I try to get the bike working okay everywhere and the way we kind of do that. Um, I think there's another question here somewhere that goes into this, but um, when I come in after a lap or two laps, I will immediately tell my crew guy, uh, crew chief Alan, that the sections I've particularly struggled with and those and the symptoms, whether it's stability, train, changing direction or stability under braking, lots of wheelie, uh, won't finish a turn, things like that. So we kind of, it, I'll, I'll mentally note throughout the lap what I'm struggling with most. The, the worst thing will go to the top of the list and we'll work our way through. So um, yeah, I could probably go quite a bit more into that, but uh, I won't. We'll see, see what the other questions are. <clears throat> uh, ben Handley has said, how many mechanics are in the team? Are they full time or taking time off their jobs to be there with you? Have you known them all a long time? Um, so we've got a, a mechanic per bike. So in, the, in this WTF team, we have two, two mechanics, a crew chief. Then there's a kind of a data fueling computer guy who looks after all the engine setting, uh, electronic settings and um, fueling and things. Um, and then a suspension technician who is on hand. Um, now he's not actually been introduced in this, in this kind of series, but um, his name is Manolo from from Italy with Bitubo suspension, but we actually call him uh, Barry, as in Barry Manolo, which is a nickname he's, uh, well, what's his other nickname? Barry. 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 That's his English Barry. name. Manolo is, Manolo is an Italian name, but we've called him Barry, as in Barry Manolo, Manolo. Um, but uh, he's cool with it. But uh, so here we have a su suspension technician, um, and a tyre guy, so I'm pretty spoilt, but these guys are all full-time mechanics, not just for this event, they work for other teams and in the British Superbike Championship. Dale is uh, World Super Sport, Barry Manolo is um, World Championship with Bachubo and British Superbike Championship with Bachubo. Um, so, yeah, pretty lucky to have, have those guys around me and I've known certainly Dale and Alan well, John Boy, actually the mechanic on the Superbike, I used to race with him a long time ago, an ex-rival, I'd say, and um, old Alan Gregory, he is, uh, 
that he's watching, so I don't really know what to say. But be careful. <laughs> um, yeah, they, I've known them all a long, a long time, and, and I think it's. Um, I think that is a crucial part of racing here is to have full trust and, 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 a, and a good relationship with my the guys around me. We we hopefully you've picked up. We try to enjoy it and have a laugh, but also knuckle down when needed and um, do it. You know, this is a serious race, so there's kind of a serious side, but we know when to when it's work time and a serious point, and then also. Um, try and enjoy any any moment we can and sort of take the mickey out of each other a little bit here and there or playing tricks on things so uh, yeah it's a good vibe and I think that happy camp is uh, helps us you know ultimately we all are involved here to to have fun and, and I suppose try and win but um, having fun is an important part of that journey. JJ12915 has asked uh, James what are the holes in your windscreen for not sure if you mentioned when you explained the bike setup. So um, I don't have the bike here to show you, but um, it's something I've always kind of, I feel helps me. I don't know, um, basically there's a lot of, the, the, the wind speed or air speed over the top of the fairing and into my sort of helmet and body, I suppose my, my is, is traveling at a great speed up to obviously nearly 200 mile an hour. Um, and you get quite a lot of almost turbulence or like messy air, let's say. We've never tested it in a wind tunnel, but um, it, you, you, I feel without the holes, I get a lot of, I call it like um, buffeting. So where the messy air behind the screen, there's obviously wind coming up um, from under the fairing, hitting the radiator and coming up through the yokes and into this, area behind the screen which can cause like more turbulence and it often rocks your head or can be um, uh, it's just another another thing I so I, I see the holes kind of help just balance the air and allow an amount of air in behind the screen so it can kind of I don't know what the, it cleans it up a little bit anyway it just uh, and it, it also relieves me that a lot of air <coughs> when you're in the bubble probably more so on a slower bike, the 600, you get a lot of hot air above the tank. And I know I watched something on MotoGP with it recently in one of the hot races, not that it's that hot here, but um, you get a lot of temperature from the bike circulating in this area, whereas the, um, the holes in the screen, it's almost just like having the window open a crack on the, on the car to let a little bit of fresh air through to uh, relieve you, I guess. And at points on the course, you really are kind of trying to get some fresh cold air in to recoup from a physical section so I hope that makes sense I don't know if it did from what I just said but uh, it makes sense to me uh, Manx 1569 is how much does the back Dakar bike cost so I bought that bike from um, a dealer in the UK for 28,000 pounds that was I bought it on finance by the way I don't sort of have that kind of money sat around but it uh, I bought it on tick and then sold it after to a kind gentleman who has lent me it back to bring here. So uh, they're not cheap, but um, there's a lot. Might not look it, but there's a lot there for the money, to be honest. My Macro Viper A has asked, uh, hi James, could you explain why the visor is changed during pit stops and not the helmets? Uh, and I know Dean changes helmet because I think the show is particularly complicated to change the visor quickly and there's high risk of it going wrong like we saw with Michael Dunlop earlier this week. Um, personally there's not I don't think there's enough time to change a helmet. I wouldn't I like to kind of put my lid on carefully and make sure the strap's done up properly and comfortable, not too tight and not too loose. So it's not something I'd want to be rushing. Um, and with the AGV piece that I run the mechanism is pretty simple and quick to change. So it's not at all feasible to be changing a helmet for me. I, um, I will stick to a visor change, but some years are worse than others with the bugs, with the temperature, with it being a bit cooler this year and, and windier, there's less bugs out on track. So I haven't actually had to do a visor change in the pit stop yet. So, um, but some years when there's a lot of bugs, it's, it's visor change every two laps. So, um, but we've not yet had a problem with that. 
I can't, I can't find it here, but there was a question about diet and hydration. So um, this year, prior to coming here, I, I've been working with Precision Hydration, which do a lot of uh, Ironman support. Uh, Tour de France, they're like uh, right, very clued up anyway in research. They, um, they're based near me in Christchurch in Dorset. And I did a sweat test with them, which measures the, I think the sodium and salt in my sweat. So it's quite interesting to see uh, and understand, well, I'll try and understand that I suppose, but um, hydration is key obviously here. Um, and I've used that throughout and felt pretty good. One thing I've suffered with in the past is like cramping more so on the 600 because you're tucked in in the bubble for a longer period but um, the um, I haven't had any cramping this year so the precision hydration test and whatever they've given me has been working so that was a good sign and on the food side of things I try um, it's always a fun especially with these delays it's tricky to eat correctly like I'll eat to a schedule and I wouldn't want to be eating to at least two hours before I go out um, but then when they delay it then I need to try and eat again as soon as they make a delay and I don't want to be going out with a heavy stomach but also I don't want to be going out with an empty stomach and not enough kind of fuel to, to get me through so it's uh, always a little tricky but what I eat is I mean I have had a few the odd box of chips or something from over the road there but um, I try not to eat too much of that more like pastas chicken uh, porridge, cereal bars, just some carbs and nothing too heavy or um, also nothing that's going to repeat on me too much, nothing too garlicky or uh, acidic. So keep it fairly plain um, and, and simple really, but definitely not too close to riding. For sure. No hot sauce. And no hot sauce, no. I'll save that for afterwards. Well, I'm going to wrap up, wrap up there. That is hopefully answered some of your questions, but um, if anything else comes up, then put it in the comments and I can reply to those directly if uh, perhaps later on or catch up with it tomorrow. But we're gonna wrap up there now. Um, it's Friday evening and tomorrow is a two lap super sport with a four lap senior race. Hopefully all goes to plan and this weather sorts itself out. Um, it's nearly five o'clock, so I'm gonna get an early dinner maybe watch a film or something with the wife and kids and uh, get an early night ready for our last day of TT 2024. So thanks for watching and I'll see you again tomorrow.